Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity Upper Left Hand Corner. We have Nimpo starting as the Green Zerg. Upper right hand corner, we got Fisheye starting as the Brown Protoss. This is on Circuit Breaker. And this is BSL Season 16, Round of 16. <coughs> Excuse me, Hasu League. And uh, the final match, Game 1 between Nimpo and Fisheye. I do want to comment that previous game, so I had thought I had figured out the lag situation by getting a new SSD hard drive. Um, it looks like that did not, in fact, solve the stuttering lag issue, which means it's potentially... Okay, so the two issues it could be are, one, a graphics card issue, or two, an issue with uh, the thoroughput. One way to solve the thoroughput issue is to get an NVMe hard drive. To have an NVMe hard drive, I need a completely new motherboard, which means I need a new chip and all that other sort of jazz. So. I'm planning probably on doing that in a year and a half from now. I've accrued a lot of, uh, ooh, we gotta see a pylon up front. I've accrued a lot of expenses this year already, mostly in the form of trips to see family and actually a Brood War tournament that's gonna be happening later this year. I'm pretty excited to go to. Um, I think it's still kinda hush-hush, so I'm not revealing any information about that, but let, let there be known there's gonna be an awesome StarCraft tournament this year someplace, hopefully, details. Spurious, but that's also gonna cost me some change. So I feel like it'll be another year and a half before I'm doing the computer upgrade. If you wanna see it sooner than that, there is the Kickstarter, which I will assume be linking. It might've already been linked in things. Forge first opener here, by the way, from Fisheye. Rare for Protoss to do these days. It's become much more popular to go for a gateway first. But point being, if you wanna see it sooner, uh, drop me some money for the Kickstarter. And if I accrue enough, I will uh, one buy the graphics card first I suppose if I get enough money to make that happen and then so it's kind of an issue of like it'll happen anyway if you want to have it have it happen earlier then donate to the cause is what it comes down to and I feel like that's an ecumenical way of of doing it yeah anyway I think that's fair uh, anyway initial zerglings being produced it looks like we saw pool first build some initial zerglings constructed no cannon as of yet. It looks like it is going to be Nexus first. The drone has gotten the scout. It's possible that the... So it's only two Zerglings, though. So not really sufficient to be a threat. The probe also has eyes on those initial two Zerglings. The drone shooting the gap a little bit. The cannon at kind of a staggered location towards that back edge. And I do feel like if this turns into a three-hatch potential 975 build, that cannon, I don't know how helpful it'll be. Usually you want the cannons more hugging... The forward edge, the drone returning the Zerglings probably can get into the main. This is going to be close, actually. So the probe actually doing a great job blockading from Fisheye to delay. Gateway's up. One probe has blocked the gap. Second probe is now closing the surface, so the Zerglings can't quite get in. And it looks like that might have been necessary because, honestly, if there hadn't been fantastic impeding from that probe from Fisheye, it is very likely that those Zerglings might have been able to get it all the way into the main done a bit of harassment there potentially, or at the very least gotten the scout and noticed that there, there's no gas as of yet. Looks like a third hatchery already planted for Nimpo at the nine o'clock location. The probe cycling back to get solid scouting information now. It's gonna be critical to keep that probe alive, <coughs> especially to get a look at the drone saturation at the natural expansion of the main, and also get a look to see whether there was this morph to layer tech, because this is a Big tell that you're going up against usually, usually three hatch mutalisk style of play rather than the uh, 973 or some other style of bust. So, simulator up, cybernetic score warping in. We'll see if a second gas gets grabbed from Fisheye in a bit to go for more gas heavy tech build. Even with the more stereotypical four hatch, it looks like we're also seeing a Zergling speed upgrade as well, which doesn't preclude the ability of uh, later busts, by the way. I mean, usually you want Zergling speed anyway, but sometimes you want to save that. Uh, there's no reason not to get it, actually. I take all that back. Third hatchery been spotted, only a single Zergling out on the field. This Zergling just being lazy. What is he doing? Just sitting there, he's like, I don't feel like running anymore. Maybe I'm going to wait for Zergling speed. Layer tech going to finish. We do see a second assimilator from Fisheye that does open up the possibility of either... Two gate Stargate play, although we don't see plus one shuffling just yet, so I don't know that he's going to do that, but also possible, usually more DT mid game play. Citadel of Dune has already been created. We don't see a lot of zealots here that have been produced from Fisheye, so it looks like he's mostly going to rely 
on airplay. This probe has been absolutely magnificent. It stayed alive up to this stage, and I do believe it saw the initial droppings of that spire. And with the timing of all this, it looks like the initial Corsair should be able to get at least an Overlord. Granted, it might just be the one on the front. It could potentially go to the main, still get an Overlord, come back and maybe take down a friend. Nearby location. A lot of gas, banking for Fisheye. Citadel of Adun is up. And we'll see if he wants to go for that DT play. Or if he's just going to go for... Pl I assume he's going to go for the DT play because he's been very light on the Zealots. And I think the Zerglings and the Overlords spotting the lack of Zealots might even encourage Nimpo to try to take down a probe or two at the front. This does cut into the economy just a little bit. Initial Corsair out. Spire away from finishing. Fourth hatchery on the front. So he is going to have some moments here where he can start pecking away at that first Overlord. It looks like it's going to be a fold back. I assume to the four hatch or eventually five hatchery uh, Hydra style. Although the second extractor is planting, we already have... Actually, it's possible we're going to see five or six hatch Mutalisk in the midst of this. So Corsair spawns, sees the main, checks everything else out. Doesn't look like it's going to bother with... Well, okay, is it going to initially... Okay, now going for the Overlords on the front. But this is Danger Town now because he's going to have Scourge in his face very, very rapidly. So at the timing of all this, needs to get out of dodge. So doing a little bit of damage, shifting away. Second Corsair is out. And the first Dark Templar under construction. Now the plus one weapon starting to try to maintain potential air control. And I think that is maybe a wise reaction to seeing that second gas up and mining. Ooh. So able to dodge out with the first Corsair, but a nice redirection from Nimpo to take down the additional Corsair. That is going to make it more difficult to have superior air control to take down the Overlords to open up lanes for the Dark Templar. Level 1 Spines on the way. It looks like it's actually going to be a fold back to 5 Hatch Hydralisk. All the Hydra upgrades underway. The Dark Templar completely clearing out the Zerglings on the front. But it looks like there's sufficient Hydralisks and enough Overlord coverage where I don't know that this is going to accomplish a lot. This The 5 Hatch Hydralisk build was very much a style that became in vogue to negate Bisu's DT Corsair play. The one advantage of this for Fisheye is before Overlord Speed kicks online and he just takes out the Scourge, he does have the option to potentially, it looks like actually that Overlord fled. He does have the option to go ahead and maybe secure a third sneakily, instead dropping two Photon Cans to defend against Hydralis bus. We do see Lurker Tech upgrading, so I believe, and we also have Overlord Speed upgrading. Nimpo, I'm assuming, ooh, grabbing his third gas as well. I assume he wants to go for a Lurker Hydralis contain. As far as a follow up, two High Templar are plopped down. Size Storm developing. Plus one weapons again, not there yet. And this is just here, the problem for Fisheye, and this is why a lot of Protoss don't like going this style anymore, is with Nimpo well defended, he can just drone freely. And right now, with the Dark Templar, there has been nearly no damage done. It is possible we could see a follow-up robotics facility and storm drops, but it's going to be quite some time before that happens. Now you have five Corsair, so it's kind of like this is the first moments at the near nine-minute mark when things are opened up for those Corsair to start roaming around and being annoying. Fisheye going to cycle out with that probe. It looks like he wants to grab the nine o'clock rather than that nearby mineral only. Potentially. He doesn't... Keep in mind... Never mind. Where is he going with this probe? And what are, what, the, what are the plans with it? Something sneaky, it looks like. Idol's being built on the front. Corsair's piling in. Interesting. So the I do not know what the purpose of this probe is. Maybe just to check out the Hydralis numbers? Create a bit of a distraction? Interesting. We already have a Spore Colony at the 9 o'clock. So not a lot happening there. The Dark Templar just patrolling bottom left. So that probe, yeah, pulled out for I don't know what reason. Curious here and curious here. We do have a robotics facility being built from Fisheye. So I assume he wants to use some storm drops. Corsair is initially barreling in, clearing the way. Oh, that Overlord is dangerously close. But already we have Nimpo moving out with a lot of his Hydralisks. And those could easily turn into lurkers with the huge amount of gas he's got in the bank to follow this up. And if he goes shuttle first, instead of observatory, 
that potentially could again keep fisheye to the lower base count it's kind of the danger of this as well so at least the initial lurkers getting contained but already able to pick off two high templar which makes them well worth their weight that was only what six hydralis for two high templar definitely worth dropping all that size storm again the robotic facility remaining silent looks like the observatory was constructed rather than initial shuttle to help negate lurker play but again at this stage fisheye has applied zero pressure zero the worker count even a lot of lurkers being built nimpo has to feel feel very very comfortable in position this was a big investment in corsairs and they've done basically nothing they've provided scouting information and that is it and prevented maybe a mutalisk tech switch nimpo dropping the hatchery bottom left dark templar might be able to halt that to create a bit of delay fisheye taking control of the high ground does have some dragoons right there another grouping of hydralisks moving out let's see if this causes a reaction with those hydralisks in a reposition but keep in mind at any moment we could see a tech switch to mutalisk because of the decent bank that nimpo's running or we could see a bunch of mutalisks being morphed but he doesn't even need to do that just scooting in just walking up literally just moseying along with these hydralisks doesn't even have plus two weapons and picking off those high templar however the hatchery bottom left was wiped out it looks like the dark templar is picked off as well i assume yeah the corsair man should get an overlord kill at the very least we do have a dark templar nearby to shut down a third if fish i can get this up and running he will have an economic lead right now he is also up 10 supply a little bit low on observers in fact i see no observers as part of this army currently so the lurkers are going to be able to push it back there's the observer force moving forward high templar moving in a little bit late getting some okay size storm on the hydralisk but just a wave of green now moving across and yeah fisheye is gonna have to fall back he does have three cannons but not a massive amount of size storm to defend against the rest of this as well and this is a decently upgraded well it's got plus one weapons so plus one weapons versus plus one weapons fisheye now down in supply there's no overlord to pick off the observers but it doesn't matter because there's no army underneath for fisheye left trying to transfer troops looks like some of these high templar might get caught if nimpo's on top of it looks like he's just going to size storm a handful of those hydralists but that high templar now pinned and it really needed to expend some size storm over a larger right there that's a good size storm over some of those hydralists however this expansion under high risk of collapsing one cannon left once that cannon's gone very little defending the front and the lurkers just need to reposition the probes scattering they're lucky they haven't lost their lives yet and as reinforcements stream in i do not believe that fish i can defend this third an overlord moving across as well side storm catches two lurkers which is fantastic but it's still not sufficient to provide enough support for that third base more zealots streaming out uh, come on plus one weapons plus one armor it looks like they just want to create a distractionary attack the corsair is trying to be mobile and it looks like they are going to find some overlords that are available and unprotected the zealots getting immediately wiped out by the hydralisk force mid mid map this could be actually a big turnaround for fisheye catching a lot of those overlords in open field the stark templar unfortunately those overlords corralling being corralled into the dark templar two zealots making their way bottom left looks like only a single hydralisk actually they could pin him in if he moves up the ramp and spawns that might be able to blockade that Ooh, big side storm of the lurker line it's gonna kill a number of them but nimpo looking to end the game here and maybe overextending because that was some brutal sets of side storm wiping out a massive amount of Nimpo's army but it doesn't look like it makes a difference as more hydro is streaming in this natural expansion extremely exposed the cannons are unpowered and I do believe this is going to be game one to Nimpo unless something magical happens these are some solid side storms I have to say as far as follow-up so that might be the magic that needed to happen but the lurkers opening fire on the dragoon lines there's nothing in between 
the attack force and you just have more units streaming across. Again, an untouched economy of Nimpo. And it's sailing on three bases, soon to be four bases. The problem for Fisheye is even if he clears this out, he still doesn't have a third. And Nimpo's about to grab his fourth and he's still running, he's sailing. Gonna be a while before that High Templar has enough energy to engage the Lurkers now. Sneaking forward, no observers providing any protection and that robotics facility is at risk. So that's gonna be GG. Game one, convincingly, goes to Nimpo. We'll see if we have a different style of build. Game two, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.